All right, cool. Hey, y'all. My name is Liz Robinson. I'm excited to be here today. And I'll start off with the introduction and then go into my top into tech. So again, my name is Elise Robinson. I am a cloud engineer. And my journey into tech started at 10 years old. And so my parents got me my first computer. And uh, it was a Packer Bell. And I distinctly remember it had four megabytes of RAM um, because I wanted to play a computer game that was eight megabytes of RAM in me. <laughs> And so it cost $2,000 and it was huge and clunky and made all kinds of noise. And so I woke up one day and was like, well, I want to know how those websites work. And so I started off with a website. I just simply still remember it and luckily it still exists. Um, it's called Lisa Explains It All. It's this hot pink and hot purple website. And you learn about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript on it. And uh, so I'm plugging through on it, probably using Notepad, because I, I really don't think there was too much of anything <laughs> to work with at all back then. And um, so I'm building websites, you know, little, little stupid websites <laughs> over the years. And then that progressed to me taking Visual Basic and C++ in high school. Now, I was going to be a computer science major, but I couldn't find an internship to save my life. So I switched to accounting. Um, ended up becoming an auditor for a number of years. And so unlike IT, um, accounting is much, much different. Um, they don't have you jumping through all these hoops and uh, and so um, yeah, I kept up with my my web development skills. So I would build websites here and there and, and uh, go from there. So I've never had to pay anyone to design anything for me. And so that was one skill that I taught myself at 10 years old. Um, then life happened. Um, I moved to Mexico for a number of years. Um, and so fell back on my IT skills. I would do consulting here and there. Um, not much though, because I, I went to I went to have fun and to heal, heal my life. And so um, then COVID hit, you know, and so COVID has changed the whole world. And so since I couldn't go out and do the things that I normally did, um, I was like, well, you know, maybe I should, you know, get on some more self-learning. Um, I haven't done that in a long, long, long time. And so um, I was like, well, I'm going to teach myself Python, maybe possibly. And so I got on Twitter for whatever reason and started searching about tech stuff. And I'm like, oh, they have a whole tech Twitter. And uh, so I started getting involved in that and doing hashtags and, uh, you know, updating my progress. Um, I don't know if you've heard of 100 Days of Code and AWS certified as hashtags. Um, the dev community is another hashtag. So I started getting popular. Um, and people started following me and following my progress. And so um, the other thing that's huge in the tech industry are certifications, correct? So of course I had none, I was an auditor. And so I was like, well, how can I afford to pay for these? Mind you, I live in Mexico, which um, very, very cheap country. And so one certification is a lot of money, a lot of money. And um, they make it hard for someone that lives in another country to get these certifications. But, you know, barrier of entry, <laughs> barriers of entry. Uh, only the strong survive, right? So um, 
I fell back on my auditing skills, which is pretty much research skills. And so I was like, well, how can I not have to pay for these things? And I got on Google and Twitter and LinkedIn and a bunch of other places that post good stuff and uh, started searching. And so I started winning all these things. I got uh, event tickets um, to a Twilio event last year. Obama was there and they had all these great topics. Um, I won a scholarship to a boot camp to learn um, Python, all types of free courses. I've won free certifications from Microsoft and, and AWS and Google. Mind you, I have like none of these things. <laughs> but um, what else? Scholarships. Um, and then uh, you know, a bunch of other things that I've won to. People are like, how are you winning these things? I'm like, I just search. You know, searching is your friend. If you're gonna be in tech, you have to know how to search. Um, and so backing up, like I said, I was an IT consultant. And so I learned more about the cloud. And that's one thing I said I wasn't gonna miss um, was getting into the cloud. Um, it seems like it's, to stay here for the near future, the far future. And so I started learning more about the cloud. And one of the things that I built when I was in Mexico was a blog, a podcast, YouTube channel, all that stuff to, to portray my Black American woman life in, in Mexico. And so I built the podcast on AWS. And I also built my subscription service for email on AWS, there's all types of tutorials out there on how to do it. And so, mind you, I knew nothing about cloud, I knew nothing about how to build these things, and so I taught myself how to do them. Um, and so, going back to Twitter and tweeting out my progress, everyone wanted to know how I was doing these things, and I said, well, I just search. And so that's how my, my business, my project, and how I got tons of interviews was by building News in IT. That's www.newsin.it. And so, going into my topic, um, side hustles your entry in tech. Um, I built it using Python, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, Google Sheets. And at the time it was AWS. I don't use AWS anymore because the rest are charging me so I got credits. But um, it became the talk of every interview that I did. I put it on my resume, it's on my LinkedIn. And I also learned how to build a Twitter bot and a LinkedIn bot. <laughs> um, using a virtual machine, Docker, um, Selenium, Python, and um, of course, that starts the interview process too, based off my resume and my LinkedIn. Um, and so my tip and trick is to build something that you're number one, passionate about, number two, you know, really nothing about so you can improve your skills. And number three, something that um, unique and that can get you in front of recruiters and hiring managers. Um, one thing about news and IT is that I built it, I launched it on a Sunday and I have my first customers on, on Monday. And so that opens up more, more dialogue with people because they're like, well, how would you find out that this would be something that would be successful? I sure as hell didn't. <laughs> I sure as hell didn't, but people said that they wanted to know. So I'm like, well, let's see how it does. My first my first website was crap. I launched it and it's crap. And that's the other thing. Don't be scared to launch and it's not perfect. Um, you'll figure out how to make it better. Um, and so um, I got lots of publicity too. I was, I was lucky in that regard. Um, I've been to a lot of tech, uh, tech places. Um, and so that opens up dialogue. And the way it opens up dialogue is you are able to tell stories, and I call them stories because um, they are stories. And so when an interview person is able to ask you a question, 
you already have something to talk about because you've done it before. You don't say, well, you know, I don't have the experience, I've never done it, but you did do it. And um, you're able to talk about it in depth because it's your baby, it's something that you launched, something that you did. Um, and I'll say there's nothing wrong with doing copycat um, projects. I've done a ton of those. Like I built a WhatsApp block that gives me soft tips. Um, and so when you build those projects too, that's, that's outside of your main project. It also gives you the stories to be able to talk about anything and everything that, that the interviewer wants. Um, now, mind you, mine applies more to cloud because that's what I do. I'm a cloud engineer, so I built my, my projects around the cloud. But um, no matter what, whether it's networking or programming, um, security or whatever, try to find something that is unique and that will you know, <laughs> get people talking about you specifically. and. Um, You'll have stories to tell. Um, when I went into my interview at my company, um, my boss was very, very intrigued by me. <laughs> Probably because, you know, um, I was a black woman that lived in Mexico at, at one point, and, um, and I was passionate about IT, but also that I built something from nothing and made it successful using all different types of tools that I knew nothing about before. Never had even heard of them. Like I didn't even know what Docker was or that Twitter you could even build a bot. Like what, what the hell is a bot? And I love building bots now. So um, you may find a niche that you want to you want to tailor and be in front of too by building these projects. I wouldn't say stick to, to something that you know. Learn all different types of things because you may find something that you really want to pursue and love too. Um, and with that said, <laughs> with that said, side hustles, your entry into tech, um, be sure to build things that you know nothing about. So you'll have stories, you'll make, you'll make errors, you'll make uh, mistakes, and you'll figure out how to fix them, which is everything in tech. Um, number two, learn how to Google, because <laughs> I Google all kinds of things every single day that I knew nothing about and learn about them. Um, ask for help if you don't know. Um, it's funny. My, my friend's been in IT forever, and I told him that I've never even worked in IT, but people trust me as an expert all of a sudden because I built news in IT. <laughs> um, and he gets mad about it. I don't care. <laughs> I rub in his face and change it. Yeah, I'm an expert and you're not. But um, it makes you an expert. And uh, and uh, yeah, have fun with it. And uh, have all the stories to tell about all the mistakes and errors that you made. And uh, you never know. You might not even need an uh, entry into tech. It might become your full time project, gig, a whole business, and you'll say hell with the job. And it is what it is. Again, thank you for having me at uh, this conference. My name is Elise Robinson, and I hope you enjoyed my talk about how to switch into tech. And um, be sure to look me up. I'm at uh, News in IT, if you're looking for boot camps, um, scholarships, um, discounted pre certification events, and free courses, um, check me out at switchedintotech.com if you need help switching into tech. And uh, check out my blog, elisrobinson.com, and uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm, I'm always open to talk. Thank you and bye-bye. Okay. Do we still have Elise with us live? In the... Awesome, hey there.
That was so informative. Um, so many people are so impressed by like your varied coding background. I can, um, I'm like, where is the chat? I can't see the chat. <laughs> and, uh, it's in Discord, yeah. Um, <clears throat> someone is asking if you use Django or Flask or something else. Um, For my website or just in general? Say for your uh, website, probably. Probably. Or in general, go do say both. <laughs> um, I've used Flask before, I believe. Not, I don't think I've ever used Django. Um, and no, my website does not use either. Okay. Out of all the stuff you've taught yourself, what do you think was the hardest, and how did you overcome that hard that hardness? The hardest. That's actually a good question. Um, I don't know. Me Same. learning the cloud right now is pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> Only because when I first learned programming, I was a child, so I had nothing else going on in my life. Mm -hmm. But now that I have other things, it's like, okay, I need to pass these exams for work and study and, you know, so I don't crash a server or whatever. So, yeah, I have to say this right now. Okay. Uh, what was your? Go ahead, Meryl. As a crashing the server is bad. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Depends on uptime, right? If you need the uptime. If you don't need uptime, then you're good. Then I mean, maybe you're fine. Yeah, stress test. <laughs> what was? Did you have another question that you're reading from the chat, Wade? Uh, nothing that I see. Um, let me read through it. Oh, no. No, I think we're all good on those questions. Uh, what was, do you think, did you teach yourself to Google or did you use any type of um, literature or what What do you think really drove you to learn how to use Google? Because I do feel like that is a huge, that's like the first huge task or first huge lesson that a lot of people in IT really learn is how to Google properly and how to like pick out links. Um, how did you learn that? Um, I don't know. I guess you have to read through the, the literature and figure out what exactly, well, first of all, you have to figure out what the problem is that you're trying to solve, of course, and then read through everything, copy and paste, try it. If it doesn't work, then try the next thing. <laughs> so, um, cause you're probably never going to figure out something that's exactly like your problem, but you can figure out something that is adjacent to it and, you know, something that's kind of the same and then go from there, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I often found that, like, in the beginning, I, w I knew what the program was doing, so if something wasn't installing or wasn't working, I'd be like, why is my Kali not installing on blah, 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 when what I should have just done was literally copy the error code and Google the error code. Because if you mm -hmm. Google just the error you get, the standard output, you're going to find the forums where like dozens of people have commented things that they've tried and workarounds that they found much faster than like, because how web spidering works versus how like humans think in syntax is very different. So that's actually a really good point. And also, just because it's 10 years old does not mean that it still does not work. I've literally found things that were 10 years old and it still works. <laughs> mm -hmm. So don't think it's too, too aged out for it not to work. No, it's still baked into there somewhere. So something that a lot of people don't understand about risk and vulnerability is, is you like generally cannot remove risk you can only mitigate around it. You can pile stuff on top to make it maybe not so bad or not so easily accessible, but vulnerabilities are still in there if you can get around enough of them. <laughs> I mitigate oh, yeah, I know all about them. risk. I, I used to be an auditor, so nothing that we, we try to mitigate the risk. <laughs> yeah, we all try, but the reason we're horrible at it is the reason I still have a job. Yep, good old compliance. Let's see. Uh, what other? What? What's your favorite technology that you've learned through this adventure? My favorite? It would have to be my first love, HTML. It does so much, and people try to say that it's not a language, and I'm like, well, we wouldn't have 
all this stuff that we have that we, now without HTML. So how do you figure? <laughs> I mean, that's true. HTML is very near and dear to my heart because anyone who had a Facebook profile that they wanted stuff to scroll across it and junk like or customize my space, but I'll give it to you. Oh, was it always in my space? Damn. Yeah. That's how old it is. Yeah. Anyone who had a MySpace and wanted to be fancy knew some HTML. But nowadays, you know, I am largely a client side attack person and I am doing a lot of HTML and a lot of JavaScript like all day. So I used to embed like a games into my into my MySpace via HTML. That's like the first I learned, yeah. Way back when. Yeah, I have to say HTML. That's that's the first language I that I learned and I mean, nothing would really be usable without HTML. It just looked like Google Doc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true. That's very true.